Hello, welcome to Local Anesthetic Podcast, your regular injection of strange, bizarre, weird news from around the world, and of course, locally. And this is episode 403 now, uh, and joining us as always is Rob. I'd like to say we sorted out the technical problems that we were experiencing last week, but Rob is still experiencing some technical problems his end. I can hear him, but I can't see him, which is always a shame, because I, you know, R- Rob does normally do the podcast in the buff, and I and I miss not seeing that, Rob. But I can send you a few pictures. We'll, we'll work it out. <laughs> there's, always, there's always phone sex. Uh, nobody mentioned sex, Rob. All right. Um, look, is there any news before we crack on with 403 of the podcast? I don't believe so. We are still getting listeners stories thick and fast. Um, and again, side so listeners for last week, like I said, the yeah the the issues we were experiencing, we just became insurmountable. Um, <laughs> I almost feel, Rob, like we should start with a listener story. Uh, to, to make up for what happened last week, I think you should start with the listener story. Okay. To make sure that even if technical issues were to plague us further along, the listener story would be there on the board. Let's do it. Let's change things up, Rob. Okay. So this week, it's coming from Kyber. Uh, <laughs> to, to, for a change. So not much of a change no, there. not really. We don't have one listener, okay? We have thousands of listeners, but... But obviously not everybody can be bothered to send a story. Uh, but, but Rob, you're favouring... Is Kyber paying you off? I wish he was, Alex. I, I, it would, I mean, it would help me out. Kyber, if you want to sort of slip me a, a couple of quid every so often, then please, please let me know. But uh, yeah, no, not the moment, no. I hope that, that that could change. Rob will even give you a free titty show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so what I'm basically saying is I am open to bribery. Um, so in- If you want to see Rob's honey monsters, just donate to his personal account. God, <laughs> I'm quite grim about that. Uh, also, it gives the impression they are overly, overtly hairy, which they're not. I mean, they're 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 the right amount of hair. Is that better? No. Right. Uh, okay. Well, this is from the BBC News from the 31st of July. Obviously, there's no journalist listed. Man brought private jet with borrowed accounts on money. Um, man brought private borrowed account. Well. Uh, Okay, I need to hear this before I cast judgment. Rob. Yeah, fair enough. So a businessman cheated a councillor out of tens of millions of pounds and went on a spending spree with cash, an investigation has discovered. Um, but how? Um, how do you cheat a councillor out of tens of millions of pounds? It, well, number one, it wouldn't even occur to me to do that, but how would you even go about it? I, I must know. Soda farms, Alex. Soda farms? No, no, solar. Solar, as in the sun. Solar farms. Apparently that's the way to do it. If you, oh God, really? Yeah, if you want to cheat right. a, a fool in his money. <laughs> yeah. no, if you want to cheat okay. a council out of money, this is how you do it. Leaked documents reveal how Liam Kavanagh used Thorough Council's money to buy luxury goods, including a yacht and a private jet. Um, the council had been made effectively bankrupt after investing six hundred and fifty-five million in Mr. Kavanagh's solar farm business. Uh, Mr. Ka- Hang on a second. Yes. Sorry, whoever's running this, ca- we'll find out who the council is in a minute, I assume. Can you tell me who the council is? or is? Uh, it's it's uh, Thurrock, yes, in Essex. So Thurrock Council, made, first of all, let's say that his thing had, all, had not been uh, a scam and had actually been a true thing and a, and a winner. Yes. Why did they think investing, because if they'd already, they've effectively bankrupted themselves by investing so much, was that a sensible strategy? Uh, <laughs> do you see what I mean? Like, even if it had turned out to be okay, you don't put all your eggs in one basket, Rob. It's a good question, Alex, because I think, um, I mean, I, 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 655 million. I mean, I don't know what, I mean, Car- Thurrock isn't a particularly wealthy part of Essex, so I, that feels like their entire budget for the year. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, where, where, where have they got this money from? Mm. It's, it's, it, it, that's a good question, Rob. But as I said before, you should never put all your eggs in one basket. Um, you should never put all your honey monsters in one mouth. Yeah, and you should never put all your... Um, uh, uh, Especially if they're hairy. Yeah, all yeah. Or your, or, or your sons in, in one... That doesn't work. Anyway, so apparently the uh, Conservative-led Thorough Council started investing with Mr. Kavanagh's business Rockfire the following year. This is in 2015. Um, the idea was that the, the council would get regular interest payments from the profits and its cash would be safe because it was secured against the value of the, of the solar farms. But the investment payments stopped after Mr. Kavanagh wound up his company and the estimated value of the solar firms is less than the council thought. Brilliant. Um, and right. Administrators are now selling the solar for- farms and Southwark is now facing a £200 million shortfall on its investment. That's, um, that's quite a lot of money, Alex. Yeah. Um... Yeah, 
Okay. Um, uh, so the council's been forced to, to, to cut services and put up council tax. Sorry, what's this guy done with all the money he was given then? The the, the solar farm guy the, the, with his magic beans? Good question, Alex. So, um, according to lead documents of Rockfire, Mr. Kavanagh spent, um, spent council money on, on himself instead of the business. Um, a ledger of payments showed that £12 million went to a company that Liam Kavanagh... Oh, they brought Liam Kavanagh's uh, private jet. Um, apparently, he also bought a Bugatti Chiron car and a, a yacht as well. Um, apparently, £40 million, pa- 40 million pounds disappeared into a bank account labelled Other, which I think is so delightfully vague. Um, an email Mr. Kavanagh sent in 2020 suggests he, he always planned to spend council, council cash on himself. These funds will be used to create a new family investment office and to create wealth uh, and create wealth for years to come. This has always been my plan. Okay, I'm going to have to ask you to stop, Rob. I I asked you to start with a listener story, Rob. You know, not looking to be depressed at the beginning of this episode. This is a hor- what a what a what a hor- what a what a well, I have no words, Rob. But um, yeah, it, it, he's quite a he's yeah. quite a shit, Alex. I'll be honest. But Rob, this has real life consequences for the people of Thurrock, who, let's be honest, only have Lakeside Shopping Centre to um, amuse them. I'm actually very impressed, Alex, that you know where Lakes- Lakeside is. But uh, you're absolutely right. It I've been there, Rob. No, really? Did you like it? Yeah, yeah. I bought for Blue Water. Is there a lake there? Is it by the side of a lake, or is it just called uh, Lakeside? I think it's artificial. I think there is. A, I mean, it's, it's very close. To, it's very close to the Thames. I mean, I wouldn't call the Thames a lake necessarily, but yeah. It's not a lake, no. No, it's not, no. <laughs> I don't know why I said that, really. Let's start with an update. Uh, like, let's start the podcast proper now with an update. Thank you, Kyber. As always, Kyber. We always appreciate it. This is from NDTV. No idea what that is, Rob. It's an update. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about when I read this headline. Okay. It's by, edited, edited, I don't know what that means, by Anjali Thakur. July 31st, Japanese man who spent $14,000 to transform himself into dog takes his first walk in public. Do you remember this man, Rob? Yeah, something vaguely rings a bell, actually. Do you remember him in like a, like a lassie type? Uh, is he the one you remember who, who bought the really elaborate dog costume? I didn't realise. Is that the same guy? Yes. yes. So, hang on. That's him. Can... I just want to clarify: is he is he dressing as a dog? He's, he's he hasn't undergone plastic surgery to turn himself into a dog, has he? Well, let's hear more. <laughs> no, let's hear more. A Japanese man named Toko has transformed himself into a canine after shelling out more than twelve fourteen thousand dollars for a custom-made collie costume. The creators took forty days to make the unusual garment, but it's helped the man realize his dreams of becoming an animal. The man has shared several videos on his YouTube channel where he boasts nearly 33,000 subscribers. The footage shows Toko rolling on the floor and playing fetch. The man has recently posted a video, which I've got in front of me now. I'm going to play it while we're on the podcast. Right? Okay. Of himself stepping out in public for the very first time. Bystanders were in awe of the human collie. In the five-minute video, Toko can be seen interacting with other people and dogs. Uh, so, I mean, Rob, he was in his element. You know, he was jizzing everywhere. <laughs> um, I'm going to watch the video now. I mean, I have to say, just a screen cap, it just looks like a woman out on a walk with a with a real dog. But let's have a look. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I just got to turn down the volume, Rob. Okay. There's, there's, okay. there's very sort of chirpy music played over the video, almost circus-like. He's rolling around on the floor. He's in the... No, it's obviously a man in a costume, Rob. It's a man in a costume. He's rolling around on the floor. People are sort of whooping and going, yay. Why? They're stroking him. His his arms are obviously too long, so he's got very long paws. He's putting his paw in a woman's arm. People are filming him. People are stopping to look at him. I'm just going scrubbing forward on the video. Uh, Other dogs don't seem interested in him at all, as far as I can tell. They look very quite scared and perturbed by him. Presumably, dogs can tell another dog. Um, he's now on some sort of trolley being wheeled around. Right. Um, he, he's been in there the whole time. Um, okay. I, I, I recommend people, I recommend people go and find this, this video. Um, the, the, the video title is dogs and people's reactions to seeing a realistic dog costume. Anything to say, Rob? Is this a, uh, is this a sex thing? He says, do you remember your dreams from when you were little? You want to be a hero or a wizard, he wrote in the clip. That's it. Well, he, Rob, wanted to be a dog. Okay. Hmm? I mean, remember like when you wanted to be 
that costume to greet you. I mean, Alex, mine, mine was a, a, beli- a beloved uh, serial mascot from the early noughties. Um, no, no, it would have been nineties, actually. Should have known that. Way, but yeah. yeah um, but, yours, you, but yours was sexual, Rob. Well, no, no, Alex, I, I tried to make this, this clear there, is that it, it wasn't sexual, it was sexy, that's the difference. Um, in the, vid- <laughs> in the video, Toka can be seen behaving like a four-legged furball. Some dogs initially showed fear after approaching the human dog. Toka has chronicled his journey on YouTube. He has not revealed his identity in public. So it could be you, Rob. Right. In a video <laughs> uploaded last year, Toko answered a series of questions. He admitted he always had a vague dream of becoming an animal ever since he was a vague... Ch- uh, <laughs> sorry, ever since he was a child. But Rob, I'm saying it now. A vague dream of becoming an animal is the episode title, and I love it. Yeah. Uh, it's a shame that you can't see my camera, Alex, because the faces I'm make, making right now. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, do you know what, Rob? I'm I'm, I'm going to stop yeah. being cynical, Alex. I, you know, this guy is. I don't think it's possible. <laughs> this guy has achieved his ambition, so good for him. I'm I'm proud of him. He's he's come what he always wanted to be, a dog. But Rob, if I'm going to shell out twelve thousand dollars, right, for a realistic collie costume and actually wear it in public, yeah, I'm going to base it on much more than. In his words, a vague dream. Yes. It's going to be a really concrete conviction. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, it's a lot of money to spend on, the, on that costume, which he's obviously had specially made for him. Um, also, where do, you go from, where do you go from here? I mean, you know, is, it, is, he gonna, is he going to dress in this costume all day long? I mean, does he go to work in this costume? What does he do for a living, Alex? I'd like to know. Well, exactly. Right, let's move to Yahoo News. This is by Grace Dean, July 28th, 2023, which they have... Re- Basically, Yahoo News have obviously got some deal with different people where they just republish the story because it says business, it's business inside. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Or publication. A manager at a Pennsylvania Wendy's invented a fake employee and pocketed wages of $20,000, police say. It's so kind of related to your story at the beginning, Rob, in terms of, you know... Yeah, I think $20,000 20, 20, compared to $633 million is it slightly different but uh yeah i mean still still whichever way you look at it alex it's still theft well yeah obviously twenty thousand dollars for robbie's pocket change <laughs> I was um, an ex-manager of a pennsylvania wendy's made up a fake employee to pocket extra wages she manually clocked the ghost employee in and out for 128 shifts and the woman was charged with theft by deception so uh, let's get into this by the way i i heard that there are now some wendy's in the uk have you tried one rob uh there are windows in the uk but no i've never tried one um do you know what i did go the other uh, well i said the other day it was a few months back i went to jollibee's um i was about to ask about that um now I, I'm right. So, what was Jollibee's like? So, Jollibee's for those who don't know, I think there are a few in the UK now, but they are. Um, I think they're this a Filipino Filipino company. I think that's right. Mm. <coughs> and I have to say, I very much enjoyed it. Although, um, what was the really odd thing they did? I mean, odd, odd to us. What kind of food? What kind of food do they serve? Rob? Well, it's it's chicken basically. It's, it's so it's fast food chicken, um, but they. Do let me just but there's something very unusual. I can't remember what it was. Um, they also they do things like chicken and like noodles. Um, mm. they also do um like a mango apple pie. Uh, well, so if you can imagine the 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 um the, the standard McDonald's apple pie, they do that with mango, which is very good. Um, that's right. They do joy joy spaghetti. That's it. So it's like spaghetti, and they also do gravy as well, which I know for, for some of our lo- lo- uh, northern listeners. That's a, that's a big thing. But I have to say, Alex, I quite enjoyed it. When I was down in uh, Dorset uh, just this week, uh, seeing my parents, and there's this sort of retail complex there, Audi, Burger King drive through, TK Maxx, things like that, I saw in the distance what I believed was a Jollibee's because I knew that they'd come to this country and I made my way over there as quick as I could only to discover it wasn't Jollibee's as my eyes had deceived me. It was a shop called Jolly Eyes, which was a pet, pet, uh, <laughs> sort of pet shop. Place. Right, okay. Yeah, that's right. So uh, I left disappointed. They do they do peach peach mango pies, and uh, but uh, alongside the chicken, they also do spaghetti. They so they do a bolognese, which is slightly odd, but yeah. Where was this uh, Jollibee's you went to? Right? Leicester Square. There's a lot of promotion here for Jollibee's. Leicester. Oh right. Yeah. Okay. Oh right. 
So anyway, a former general manager of a Wendy's restaurant in Pennsylvania who police said made up a fake employee so she could pocket their wages has been charged. Linda Johnson created a, in quotes, ghost employee named William Bright, whom she clocked in and out of the outlet she managed at Lancaster. The, uh, in Lancaster, the Minehame Township Police Department said last week, uh, Lancaster in the United States, obviously. Johnson kept up the scheme for close to a year, during which time she manually logged 128 shifts for the fake worker who was paid basically about $20,000 between June 2021 and May last year. Multiple employees said they could not recall ever working with somebody called Bright. In April, Johnson admitted to a police officer that she added Bright as an employee and created shifts, even though he didn't work. Uh, police said that the paychecks were deposited into her cash app account. Right. Um, what a great idea. What a great idea. But how was it not noticed? Yeah, I mean, because I, I, you would have thought these big companies tend to audit. So... But I suppose if the person was clocking in and out, then how would they know? I mean, realistically, I mean, if she was in charge of this kind of thing, then you could quite easily get away with it. Well, somebody here in the comments says this is uh, talks about another scam, which they say is the best scam they've ever heard. An HR manager at a production plant, which had a high turnover, would keep employees on the payroll one to two weeks after they'd left the company and put those checks in the account for herself. Didn't get caught until the company went under and by then no one was there to press any charges. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Well, I sure, I don't feel bad saying brilliant, but... I know the truth said I worked in a large factory that had a graveyard shift. A father and son working there realised it was impossible for managers to know where everyone was all at all the time, so they clocked each other in whenever one was not there. <laughs> that is brilliant. Now, somebody just here says, so they were criminals. <laughs> I mean, that's what we're talking about, Rob. Joy. We're talking about criminality. Right, let's end with... The, I'll save the best of laughs here, Rob. Uh, this is from Perth Now. Um, which kind of does what it says on the tin, um, by Rachel Fenner, July 31st, 2023. Rob, whatever you can hold in yourself internally at the moment, uh, then I'm asking you to hold it. What? Gird your loins. What does that mean, Bible Alex? Says, Rob. What's up? Are you telling me to brace, just, to brace just, myself? Okay, I'll read the headline and then you'll understand. Right. Florida manatee Hugh dies from internal injuries after brother Buffett had intense sex with him. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. He's, sorry, brother. Steal yourself, Rob. Right, okay. Yeah. A manatee named Hugh has died from internal injuries sustained while having intense sex with his brother who's called Buffet. Oh, and I And I mean God. Buffet as in Toby Carvery. Rob. Right, okay, good. Or Buffett, I think it's meant to be pronounced. Hugh and Buffett had lived in the aquarium together for 27 years. So you imagine, Rob, 27 years. That's I'm looking at a camera. I can't even see Rob now, but I'm looking into the camera to talk to Rob. 27 years. That is a very long and deep relationship that's basically been ended by one being buggered to death. Alex, can we? is it possible to have an episode title that's 27 years of sodomy? Is that, is that going to be okay? <laughs> I would have thought so. Yeah. yeah. Well, but on April the 29th, Hugh unexpectedly died after a day of rough sex with his brother. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. Necropsy results. What? Released last week by the... Necropsy? I know, necropsy result. Yeah. That's a, good, that's a good company name. I'm going to form a company called Necropsy. <laughs> I'm going to look up what it means. It's obviously, it's obviously related. It's like to a post-mortem, I'm assuming. Uh, another term for autopsy. Yeah. Okay. Basically. Necropsy results released last week by the United States Department of Agriculture revealed that Hugh died as a result of high intensity sex with his larger brother who caused a Rob, Rob are you are you girded? Are you are you steeled? <laughs> as much as I can be, Alex, yeah, go for it. The larger brother caused a fourteen point five centimetre rip in his colon. Oh my god. Just leave that. It's just give that some room to breathe, Rob. I I hmm. I mean, that's quite long. That's yeah, uh, I, half I mean, the size of your standard ruler. I, so I was thinking of, the, of those rulers you used to get at school, which were 15 centimetres. Um, we had 30 centimetre ones, Rob. I think, I think your school was hard up. <laughs> I think actually, they took the standard 30 centimetre ones and broke them in half so they could d dish out more of them. Well, actually, Alex, what, well, I didn't like to say it, but we actually have those fancy rulers. If you remember, the, they, used to, they used to become two parts. You used to have a little hinge that you could then take off. They used to clip together. <laughs> Right. Posh. According to the report, after the animal's first sexual encounter on April the 29th, researchers found blood in Hugh's colon, but the pair were allowed to continue mating throughout the day. So they said, oh, 
well, fine, let it go on. I get, is that, that's sorry, irresponsible. Isn't is it? It, there were people who are clearly off our, our, our fault here? <laughs> Why yeah. did they let this continue? Buffett finally so uh, so they allowed them to continue mating, but Buffett finally became tired and swam away from Hugh. But it was too late. The smaller manatee was found dead at the bottom of the pool. You enjoying the story, oh, Rob? God. No, <laughs> this is horrific. <laughs> Moat Mote Marine Laboratory and Aquarium published a statement on their Facebook page on June 26th to explain the incident. Sorry. The statement explained that the pair had engaged in natural yet increased mating behaviour on the day Hugh passed. Now, Rob. Natural? What was natural about this? <laughs> hey, Rob, no judgment. Natural yet increased mating behaviour for the episode title is fabulous. Yeah, it's very... It is very good, yeah. Okay. Um... Uh, it said the animal care team observed the pair initiating and mutually seeking interactions with each other throughout the day and there were no obvious signs of discomfort or distress. On the advice of veterinari- veter- veterinarians, the team chose to use distractions over separation to reduce the pair's undesirable behaviour. They tried to distract them, Rob, you know, like uh, waving a balloon, offering them a Snickers bar, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, there were no obvious signs of discomfort or distress, such as listing, crunching or active avoidance that would have triggered a need for intervention. Some aquarium visitors weren't satisfied with this response though. So, in an effort to avoid undue stress and anxiety by separating them, you ultimately did more harm by having one die and the other now experiencing untold stress and anxiety. Well done, Denise wrote in a response to the statement. I love how aquatic attractions pander to tourists and use terms such as managed care in place of what it really is. Captivity, confinement and servitude. They should not have been born in confinement and should not have lived their lives in confinement, Emily added. On the aquarium's website Buffett is described as one of Moat's most charismatic residents he in quotes he is one of the only manatees in the world trained to participate in voluntary detailed behavioural research designed to aid manatee conservation right so, um, and for a small fee Rob he will uh, bug yeah. you to death yeah great well that's something to look forward to Okay, Rob, you got some stories for us there. Alex, I'm really pleased that my next story is is a lot lighter than your last story was. Um, so that's something. Um, we've already been to Essex, but we're going to go back. Uh, so this is from the, the Basildon, Canvey and Scythend Echo. Uh, it is from the 31st of July by Sophie England. Um, do sounds like you know, a good, solid, a good, solid um, English reporter. Um, it's... It, it, <laughs> It's one of those stories that, you know, this podcast was founded upon. Um, it's not too long. It's the right length and it's just enjoyable. So the headline is... Um, <laughs> Sorry, Rob, is that a euphemism? No. Not too long, just the right length and very enjoyable. Is that how you advertise yourself on Tinder? Alex, given the last story, I think, you know, that, that we, we need something like that. Um, right. So uh, the headline is, uh, South End Mum cut out a baby swing by firefighters. We've had stories like this before, haven't we? We have, yeah, we have, yeah. Um, Right, okay. Um, so a mum was rescued and cut free from a baby swing by firefighters after being stuck in it for an hour in a South End park. <laughs> Which is a long time to be stuck in a, a swing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Leela Van Best, 22 from South End, slipped into the children's swing while hanging out with her daughter and some friends in a park in South End on Thursday. Uh, after a 10 minute swing, having as much fun as her daughter, Leela tried to hop out and found she couldn't. Um, laughing, Leela tried to wriggle free, and friends and strangers. Right, sorry, I got confused. It wasn't the kid who stuck in a swing; it's the adult who got in that the one of those. Yeah, the mother got swings, stuck in it. Which yeah. You, yeah, you can't fit. No, that you know, maybe as a teenage you could get away with it, but we'll reach a certain age where we realise that we can't do those sort of things anymore. We have, you know, bits of fat basically that we didn't have before, Rob. Yeah, unfortunately, it's true, Alex, and I feel that my bits of fat recently have. <laughs> Been growing somewhat, but that's a, that's another story. Um, Are you talking about your fat back? <laughs> no, it's more it's more than I think it's the more the belly. That's what worries me. Um, I don't even drink that much, but uh, some something's contributing towards it. Anyway, look, listeners uh, aren't that'd here. That'd be for the that. mini cheddars, Rob. No, Alex, mini cheddars are a surprisingly low in calories. Mm. Um, I don't know whether that's true or not. Uh, so Leela tried to wriggle, wriggle free, and friends and strangers attempted to heave her out, but she was well and truly wedged. Uh, eventually, the fire brigade was called, and four firefighters arrived within ten minutes. Blaring, <laughs> sirens blaring, and lights blazing around seven forty-five. Um, now, of course, there are pictures because I'm guessing her friends was taking the piss. 
so hilarious images show three, three firefighters taking the swing apart after failing to put her out. Uh, Leela, who works in customer service in the South End, said, I was stuck there for about an hour. It was very, very funny. Um, everyone was looking and laughing. Then the fire engine turned up and people started opening their doors too. I couldn't stop laughing. Um, right. Alex. So you've got a high tolerance threshold for humiliation. Then. Yeah, I think so. But also, I mean, you do have to worry about, about the firefighters in this situation because, you know, these men put their life on the line every day. Do they enjoy being called out to this kind of thing or do you th- do they feel they're wasting their time? I'd really like to know. Yeah, I... I... <laughs> Do fire, are there a lot of fires happening in the UK regularly? Because I feel like the only time I ever read about firefighters they're doing something non-fire related. Uh, but this this is drifting into sort of stupid sort of Daily Mail type crap. Yeah, you know, true. Of course, they're working very hard and saving people's lives. It's just what I'd like to hear more about it. I think we should... Yeah, why don't we ever hear that on the news? Like, firefighters saved four people today. I'd like to hear more about that, you know? Yeah, good point, good point. Well, apparently, the firefighters yeah, kept yeah. cracking jokes. Um they didn't know why I got in the, the, in the swing and I wasn't really thinking. It really hurt when everyone was trying to pull me out. I have some bad bruises on my hips now and then they go into detail about how they took the swing apart, but that's not relevant. And also because I want to move on to the next story. Alex, we featured a guy on this podcast who used to take very blurry pictures of various objects and claiming them they would be UFOs. Do you remember that, that guy? John Mooner. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> We've got that latest story. We were going to try and feature it on our 400th episode, but we didn't get the time. Are you going to feature it now, Rob? I is am. It, is it now time? Right? I am. This is So this is from the 24th of June, 2023. Incredibly, this is from the New York Post. Mm. Um, it is by... Uh, he's finally made it, Rob. Yeah, he's finally crossed the Atlantic. He's getting the, re- the recognition he finally deserves, Alex. So this Although, is from- my, if my memory serves me correctly, and I don't want to spoil the story... But as I remember it, Rob, when I read that story, I thought he still has not upgraded his camera. Uh, n- no, that, that is true. He also, by the way, hasn't moved abroad. He's still very much living in Devon. So I think he is in the Plym- Plymouth area. Um, so this is by Brooke Cato. The headline is UFO Hunter claims new photographs are definitive evidence that we are not alone. Now, he's claimed us on several occasions. So let's just be clear. Let's just, let's just be clear. Definitive evidence means, right? So not only, so not, let's just take the word evidence. That means like this is proof. Definitive means it's inarguable. There is no other explanation. So this man is saying we now have proof of extraterrestrials visiting this planet. Correct. That's right. So it's staggering. <laughs> absolutely. And I think I'm surprised this hasn't got more traction, to be honest, because I mean, it's, uh, it's quite a revelation. So, a British UFO, U, ufologist, I think that's how it's pronounced, believes new photos of a foreign airborne object are among growing evidence that we are not alone. John Mooner snapped the eerie images Monday of an unidentified flying object hovering over an English countryside in Devon that he claimed was an alien flying saucer. A glint of light instinctively caught my eye as something metallic looking came from, from behind a cloud. He reported the, the bizarre... Yeah, sorry, Rob. Sorry to intervene. Sorry to yeah. intervene a second. The other thing people have to understand, this man's written a whole book about his UFO experiences, which keeps saying we're going to buy. But he must have... He must now have deduced that the aliens must be choosing him to some degree, because it's not possible for what... Like, this man's seen an inordinate amount of UFOs. Yeah, that is that is true, yes. I mean, we have in the past... Been You've also got cynical. to remember, Rob, that in one of his stories, he met an alien. And that alien was <laughs> small, true. a midget alien, hiding behind some bins. <laughs> and he was wearing... Hang on. Rob, it was wearing a parka. <laughs> yeah, that, that is correct, Alex. Yeah, and he drew some pictures. Like that, Kenny. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, he drew some pictures. I mean, they're, they're, uh, look, Alex, we have been very critical and very cynical of this man in the past. We've said that some of the pictures uh, of the things he spotted, one of which looked like the moon, one of it which looked very strange, like a street lamp. Um, but this time, this time, I think he may be onto something. So he reported the bizarre object had a force field emitting around it. Um, quickly capturing some pictures with his Nikon P900 digital camera. Upgrade your camera. Yeah, I mean, what the fuck even is that? 
Isn't sorry? Isn't that, was that time his phone? Did there was that time his camera ran out of batteries or something ridiculous? I'm sure that was a P900. I don't. I'm sure it was the same camera. I really want to find out. That's what I'm saying. I remember it distinctly being the P900 Nikon. Hang on. Let me, I just want to see whether it's even like a DSLR. Oh, it is. Oh no, it's not. No, okay, no, it's it's not even a DSLR. It's a, it's what's known as a bridge camera, but that's okay. You know, maybe you can't afford to buy a new camera. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt there. But he says I was completely gobsmacked by what I saw. And um, he added, it was unmistakably a fine saucer with two rectangular windows on the on the dome portion of the craft and four black opening along the bottom part of its structure. No, he always says this. What has this man got superhuman vision? I've right. Okay, look, we're running out of time. I've seen the picture of this. It looks like a top hat being thrown across the air in the distance. Doesn't it, Rob? I don't even know. Yes. What do you think it is? Um, I mean... It, it, how is he claiming that he can see hundreds of miles away in detail? He He's drawn pictures before where he says he could see the alien driving the UFO. Uh, yes, that that is also true. Um, He's mad. What I love is we've got, obviously got commenters from the US um, who are obviously Cobra commenting. Oh. Um, so um, can we hear those then, Rob? Because we are running out of time. I'd like to hear these comments. Yes, yeah, CYD Sheree says that's, that's the exact photo of every UFO published since 1949. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, Paul Radlock says, has anyone been able to provide a photo that, that was not grainy and blurry of a UFO? Um, it's similar to that, that in respect of all the Bigfoot bit pictures too. Um, that's so ridiculous. This is from a walled man uh, who said, this, this is so ridiculous. We have all the advanced uh, photography, uh, photographic technology we have. It's inconceivable what the one photograph of UFO is very clear. Um, they always tend to be out of focus and grainy. Bill says, wow, a blow for, uh, blow photograph of UFO. That's something you don't see too often. Right. Um, it's always the same thing. Yes, yes. The photos is. of these big cats are always incredibly blurry and abstract and, and could be interpreted in many different ways. The same with these UFOs. If this man is this man is a dedicated ufologist, right, Rob? He's got his own website. I'm sorry. You would have the best fucking camera money you could buy. Uh, I, I, I do agree, Alex. I just want to finish off this last... What does he um, mean it had a certain number of rectangular... This man's insane. How could he see the windows on a UFO? Because he zoomed in. That was her... Alex, this, look... <laughs> As we know, opinions matter more than facts in this in the current day and age. So, you know, if he interprets it, this is this is his interpretation, which we have to believe. It's his truth, Rob. His yeah, point. exactly. And uh, Tully just finishes off by saying, this is Tully 440 um, in relation to aliens. Uh, they've been walking among us, among us. They're called the Democrats. Right. Cryptic. <laughs> That brings us to the end of episode 403. Thank you very much for your company. We're sorry again we've been plagued by some technical issues. Normal service will be review resume drop on episode 404, which normally means a computer error and a sign of a, <laughs> yeah, of a point, technical yeah. difficulty. Like yeah. for, but 404 is when Rob will have sorted his shit out and, uh, and we'll be back on fine fettle. Uh, but thank you for listening everybody go to our website lapodcast.net there's a donate button in the top right hand corner so you can donate to the worthy course that's this podcast a one time donation or a rolling donation we'd appreciate it just see it as a tip but also if you don't want to do that can you donate your time by leaving us a review on whatever you are listening to us on and just spread the word LA Podcast get your friends family listening random passers by aliens you come across um, whatever else thank you very much everybody see you in a week's time God bless and keep it local